What's up everybody? Welcome back to NFL Head Coach 09. It's my last video on the channel this year and I am really enjoying the head coach content lately. Thank you for all the support in this series. I am looking at speeding up the pace of this series so that we can get closer to the end. I have some things I do want to do, but we're entering a new era in the series. I'm excited with the drafting of quarterback Matt Ream, the rookie that I would like to be our starting quarterback right away. And today we're going to find out what he can do in the preseason and if he is ready. And we're going to start out here, incentive-free five-year deal. I kind of like that. At the same time, we have a trade offer here for Wade Appling, who is projected to be our backup quarterback. I guess we could see what teams are offering, and it's all just late round picks, some of them not even for this coming draft. So we're out of here. If you want to trade for Matt Ryan now, that is a different story. He is available. And he only has one year left on his deal. Obviously, signing the rookies here is very important. I'm going to go with the incentivized deal here for Dibbles to see if he can earn those through uh, some good play. Rookie guard Jarrett Putnam. We'll see if he has a chance to start. It is possible. This is actually something I wanted to talk about. Team philosophy. This is going to dictate a lot of the overall ratings that we're given. And sometimes we don't exactly have uh, a great idea of a player's overall because it's focusing on the overall for that philosophy. So we have ours set to a strong arm prototypical quarterback pocket passer. And Reem doesn't have the strong arm, and that may have tanked his overall a little bit. So if we were to pick something more like a peer passer quarterback or a field general, I think his overall would appear to be better. Now, I don't really care what overall is because I know what the player's individual ratings are. I know how they fit into the team. But I might as well just update some of these philosophies here, and we'll see how these players match what I tend to be looking for. I'll just switch it from strong arm tools quarterback because I really don't care at this stage if you have the strongest arm. I just want accuracy and hopefully limited interceptions. So let's go field general quarterback. Balanced halfback is fine for me, although these days I tend to lean more towards speed at the position. I have given some control, by the way, to some of our coordinators so I can't change everything. I'm going to change our defensive tackle philosophy to run stopper instead of one gap penetrator. Obviously, I want the man coverage, ball hawk corners for kicker, pinpoint accuracy. I am on the same page with Jason Hansen here. And we'll see if we can hopefully fix some of our uh, issues in special teams this year. Oh, wow. Arnez Soriano, the number one pick. Walking out on negotiations with the Panthers just in the offseason, didn't it say that his dad was his agent and there wouldn't be any sort of holdout coming? Soriano made the right decision to come out early since his stock may never be higher than it is now. He should be easy to sign too. His father is acting as his agent and he has already publicly said there will be no holdout. Dad knows best and dad is going to get this deal done. All right, training camp invites. What do we have here? Mostly rookies, another punter. Now they show Reem as 96 potential. Wow, I can't wait to find out what it actually is. But I know that right away his accuracy is really good. His awareness is exceptional for a rookie. So I have high hopes, especially early on as his learning is 98. The first thing we're of course going to do is increase playbook knowledge for Matt Ream and try to get him ready to play as fast as possible. Here's how fast his learning works by the way. We're getting, actually it said before he already has some of the playbook mastered. Is he doing some off-season playbook study in here? Is that a thing? But there's a look at the progress for these plays at least. I know for sure I need to do some signing and there are some opportunities out here by the looks of things. 
Whoa, Cedric Ellis, Tamba Hali, Dwight Freeney, Clinton Portis. This is pretty interesting stuff. I know for sure I want to sign a receiver. We'll have some competition there at the bottom of the depth chart. And I think I'd like to bring in somebody here like Roscoe Lester, who is 26 years old, has good route running, has some speed and catching. Might be somebody that we can uh, help develop a little bit. I do think an edge rusher off the bench makes a lot of sense, and Dwight Freeney's ratings are still off the charts. So, I would like to bring in Dwight Freeney. Freeney, though, is not ready to play. He is hurt. So, I'm not sure when he'll be ready to go. If we check out his health, his legs are both at 32 or below. He's not ready to play anytime soon. But these are the kinds of things that we can do given our salary cap status. And we'll continue to fill out the roster here. We have $4.4 million left in space. And of course, Matt Ryan will not be on the team by the time this episode is over. Is anybody showing any kind of interest yet? It took him off the trade block for some reason. Has Ryan up to a 90? That must be because I fixed uh, my philosophies or whatever and he fit that even better accuracy is 82 his awareness is still just 77 and it's not going to get better it's capped out it can't get better can we trade matt ryan that is the only offer we have a sixth round pick hold up hold up a minute here a sixth round pick for matt ryan do you recall just minutes ago, very small amount of minutes, when Wade Appling was getting more offers for more than just a sixth round pick to Jacksonville? Matt Ryan has less trade value right now than Wade Appling. I don't know if it's because of his contract, it could be. That might be the best we can do. And if it's the best we can do, I'm gonna take the deal. I will give it some time though and see if anybody decides a fifth round pick. Overall I like where the roster is right now, especially once we get rookie running back Kemba Clayton signed, and I'm really excited to see what he can get done in the preseason. Michael Turner is getting older and we've seen his speed now regress, and Clayton's going to be the most explosive back on the roster, and I'm not signing somebody like Felix Jones right now unless we see Clayton not really do much. I'm okay giving him some incentives in these deals here, and I hope he can reach them. Injury alert. Paul Puzlozny. Out two to three weeks with a high ankle sprain, and he is somebody who has a starting opportunity this season, and this is certainly going to hurt those chances. What we're going to do is pay a lot of attention to things like missed assignments and some of those deeper stats in the game as we sim through the preseason to see if somebody like Solomon Babbitt could be ready to play. It has his overall right now projected to be 52, which is low, so we'll see. But there will be some chances to him and probably Kevin Burnett. Jared Ballard's obviously going to have a starting role, same with Bowley. So we'll move Burnett to the right side here, and that'll be a little competition now. And if you don't mind, I'm going to experiment a bit here with some of the episodes and have them less focused on, like, individual games. I think that slows down the series quite a bit, and I think I like it more when we do that for the real key games and instead have uh, more games in an episode and maybe get into games and sim them and play them if they get interesting. So you can let me know what you think of this episode. We are not going to watch a full game today. I'm kind of just going to be recording for a while, and once I think we have an episode worth of footage, then I'm going to end for this one. Alright, down below it tells us that Arnez Soriano is still having those contract talks with the Panthers, but no deal done yet. And I'm going to be putting some time now into game plan prep for... Where is he? We have a lot of rookies. I couldn't find him there. Kemba Clayton. I want to get him ready, and I'm really hoping he can break out. 
Chuck Castle, I love the way his career began, but unfortunately, it's what have you done for the team lately, and Castle really hasn't had a major impact, I feel, in a while. Let's go through his numbers, because his career really couldn't have began better than it did, and it looked like he might even replace Michael Turner. He ended up having just 3.9 a carry as a rookie, but that was after he had some long touchdowns and massive games to start. And then comes back in 2011, four carries, seven touchdowns, 493, not bad, but you see no explosiveness here. 14 was his longest run. We wanna see some explosiveness out of our backfield. That's something that's become very important to me. And the main uh, team has been like San Francisco. They only have home run hitters at running back. And they're not just boom bust running backs, but they all have home run potential. And you can look at the last couple of years with uh, Mostert, Matt Breida, Jeff Wilson, Jarek McKinnon, Tevin Coleman, Jamichael Hasty. They all have home run potential. I think when you're looking at a backfield and you're like, okay, here's a part of our team that's getting half the touches in the offense, most likely, they better have, you know, the ability to break one. I guess as well as San Francisco, you look at Kittle and Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. Anybody who touches the football on that team has the chance to really break one, big time. I really like the way that they have uh, built the team with their skill positions. Definitely been an influence of mine over the past couple of years. All right, so we do have a little progress report here. I don't know how much of this is accurate, but these potentials match up with what we've seen last episode, and then as I changed the philosophy, Reem's potential changed with it. So Clayton at 88, putting him at 84, don't have a lot of potential ratings. Do we ever get a complete speed here? Yeah, 91 for Kemba Clayton. That was as expected. 88 learning, 47 awareness. That might need a little time, but I'm really excited to see what he can do for us. 82 ball carrier vision on day one. Oh my, trade offer for Matt Ryan. What do we have here? Is this the moment Matt Ryan gets traded finally? Let's see. A sixth round pick, now a seven and a six offered by the Rams, but that six is in the future. I want to make a deal. This has been on the table for a while. I'm still going to wait. Panthers just signed Clinton Portis to a one year $7 million deal and he has 80 speed right now. I had some interest until I saw the speed. Let's see, that's four times now I have worked on the game plan prep here for quarterback Matt Ream. And now he's getting to know the waddle fade, the waddle slant. Like, this is the kind of studying you need here in this offense. These are two important plays to me. That's why we average 10 yards a play on the fade. New season goals. What do we have here? Have to work on Tony Gonzalez play knowledge. Harry Douglas is at 8%. What? 7% for Torrance Gill? That's really odd. And how am I going to do this? Dwight Freeney's not 100%. I'm not even sure he can play the preseason. He'd be on the pup list right now. Is there pup list in preseason? I think that's only when the regular season starts. Maybe not. I don't know. Pup list, though, usually keeps a player out for the first six weeks of the season. Where are my injuries? NFL injuries. Here we go. High ankle sprain for Puzlesny. So it's not showing Freeney here as injured. Keep in mind, Rod Coleman also was signed and wasn't 100%, but wasn't listed on the injury report. If we go to health and fatigue, then we're going to know. Freeney is 59, out. Coleman, 77. They just don't have injury designations. So this is one thing to keep in mind. How fast can these two heal? Because they could add a nice boost, but we'll just have to see when they are healthy enough to play. Freeney is nowhere near close. 
All right, everybody, game time here against the New England Patriots. We will sim this game. Now, I made Reem the second quarterback in the hopes that he would get the most snaps that way. So here we go, 34-25, Appling. He was 3 for 9, Reem 4 for 11, and then Delwyn Wilcox. Three scores, 12 of 18 for a buck 71. Third string quarterback gets the most play time here. All right then, for the running game here. Okay, I guess I don't have carries going to our rookie running back yet. I'll fix that. Daniels had two touchdowns. Lester had one. Waddle had three catches for 66 yards. The defense didn't appear to play very well. And maybe we can get some data here. But Brockers, Ballard, and Tisdale had the sacks. Waddle had an INT. So, like... How much information am I getting from those? Because, like, certain ways of playing the game get you certain information. So, in, like, this case, I want to be able to go to our roster. And I want to know how Kevin Burnett played, for instance. I want to know if there were missed assignments or what. Basically, gives you an idea of things that you would never be able to know otherwise. Looks like eight tackles in that game. He had a block defeated, no missed tackles, four big hits. What's a that? What's a culled? I think this is thrown at and this is catches allowed. Two of four, 50%, 16 rush yards or receiving yards. But where does it show the missed assignments? That's in the general tab. Four last year. Three missed assignments in the preseason game for Burnett. On 82 downs played. Compare that to Solomon Babbitt. And now his overall is projected to be 62. And that is a lot better. He didn't get to play. These percentages are getting better. Freeney was at 57, I want to say previously and that was just a couple days ago in game so i'm interested in where he's at when preseason's done this is a month i don't think he'll be fully ready i think we're still looking at him missing two months possibly six to eight weeks and how do i come to that conclusion guessing here we go again everybody trade offer for matt ryan last time two teams were interested Three teams now interested. I'm going to keep waiting. This is it. All right, we're on to our second game now against the Seahawks. And this time, we do win the game. Approval goes up. A goal is complete. What happened? Oh, playtime here. There's no way Dwight Freeney got on the field. There's no way he played 50 downs in the preseason game. But the goal's complete. Here's the box score. Ream, two touchdowns, no picks. Wilcox once again, very effective. But Ream got more playing time, and it looks like his play was pretty solid. 136 yards, two scores. On the ground, Castle got majority of the carries and was more productive than Clayton, who got his first preseason action here. Clayton broke more tackles, though. For receiving, Lester found the end zone for the second straight game. He's on his way to making the final roster. Very nice. And guess who's back? Xavier Short. He disappeared. We didn't have him for a while. And then, like, the game brought him back as a training camp invite or something. I don't remember signing him, but he's here, and I'm glad he is. So he can kick return and stuff. Three sacks given up by Debrickashaw Ferguson. A sack for Brockers, a pick for Bowley, a pick for Kevin Burnett, who had a deflection and five tackles to go with it. Bowley also had a blocked kick, a forced fumble, and a recovery. I'm imagining those are all the same play. And kicking here, I have to be paying attention to that. But they do, like, play backup kickers in this, so it gets really messed up. And Aldridge starts to punt for some reason. It's saying that Freeney played. Really? Two tackles, a deflection, 
He had 18 blocks defeated and 9 hurries. He's not even close to 100%. You don't set inactives in the preseason. Oh, he played 66 snaps in that game. So that was a legit goal completed. I don't know how he's even getting on the field. He got 9 hurries. And he's like at 57% health. Well, that's one of the more amazing things I've seen in any football video game. The fact that he can be that productive with his legs at like 30% health. How can you even do the Dwight Freeney spin move with your legs that hurt? Here we go. Another trade offer for Matt Ryan. This is like the third time now teams have been interested in this preseason. And now only two teams are offering and they're both looking at giving us sixth round picks. Now that's obviously where it begins. We can ask for more. So I'm open to having a conversation with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Matt Ryan for a sixth round pick. Is that really the best you can do? And that's a future pick. We've upped our offer. Now it's going to be that six plus a seven. Could you increase it further? Wait a minute! You're back to the start! Wait a minute, that's a 2014 sixth round pick. It's more valuable. Could you increase it again? We're a bit tired of this, but we've increased our offer. The six and a seven this year. <sighs> Is that really the best we can do? A six and a seven for Matt Ryan. I have accepted the trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars. How about that? I got them to go up to a 6 and a 7 both this year. How about that trading right there? I am shocked I couldn't at least get like a mid-round pick. But that's how it goes. It looks like Ryan could be their starter. They have David Garrard, but we'll see what direction they decide to go. They also drafted Alvin Washington. So a lot of options here to see who they trust to lead the future of the franchise. Ryan, of course, is on a one-year deal. And it's, you know, a six and a seventh round pick to see what happens here. I don't think is bad for them. Especially because Washington probably needs some time to develop. But you already had Garrard, and is Ryan going to give you a higher level of play? Remains to be seen. But now as we look ahead to the draft, which we won't do very much, but bonus 6th round pick, bonus 7th round pick. That wasn't actually theirs, so it's the Colts 7th rounder we just got. I was actually interested in maybe trading for a quarterback who had like high speed that we could have some gadget plays for. But a lot of these players, teams don't want to trade. And the best speed out of any quarterback on the trade block is just a 78. So when it comes to trick plays, it's basically going to be whatever we can do with like Demario Waddle. Maybe line him up at quarterback sometime. But we don't have a lot of speed as far as the quarterbacks on our team goes. Wilcox has the most. And I think we'll stick with these three quarterbacks now. What does everybody think? The Matt Ryan era has officially come to an end here in the series. It's a very risky move to make, but I really like the potential we have with Matt Ream at quarterback. I'm excited to see what he can do. On day one, he has advantages over Matt Ryan. He's yet to take a single snap. His awareness is over 10 points higher, I think, or it's like 8 points higher, and his accuracy is much higher. I think those two alone could be huge helps for us. It's game day. I have to see what his arm strength is going to be because it's not great, but we have to see what that means. It could not matter. We'll see. But we win our third preseason game, and this time Reem throws two more touchdowns and no interceptions. Ampling did throw one, and again, Wilcox is playing really well in the preseason, it appears. Uh, this one actually not that good. 8 for 19, but he did have 105 yards, still just 5.5 an attempt. So, Reem wins that week. And then rushing, Clayton, 22 yards, Turner, 25, Castle, 33. 
Whoa, Tyshawn Daniels, 180 and 2. Again, good production out of Leicester. I like this. I like how the team is coming together. And Freeney's still playing. Freeney's playing more. Oh, no. Kevin Burnett, injury alert. It looked like he was doing a pretty good job from that previous game that we looked at. He was productive in it. But a bruised thigh now is going to keep him out for half the season. We will place him on injured reserve. Is there the designation to return though? I don't think there is in this era. So I won't IR him right now. So I would say that opens the door again for Puzlozny to play linebacker if he is healthy enough to play. I know that he's been battling injuries this preseason as well. He's not on the injury report right now. And Burnett's at five to six weeks, not seven to eight. So we could get him back after the first quarter of the season. Also too, even if there was the designation to return, that's in uh, modern football, that only applies to players put on IR during uh, the regular season. If you put on IR in the preseason, you're done for the year no matter what. Final preseason game. So far, things have been going pretty well, and we will complete by going 3-1. and one. Matt Ream did not play as much as Wade Appling. So, 4 for 4 is all he got, but Appling was lights out. I think that's a perfect quarterback rating. 20 to 24, 314, 3 scores. That is outstanding. Didn't run the football fantastic in this game, but we threw the ball all over the field. Two receivers over 100, two more players over 50. Nice way to end things. And Brockers has like a sack in every game. Freeney got a sack as well. Ballard a pick. This is really impressive here. I am really happy with the team going into this season. And I guess it's time for our preseason promise. Win the Super Bowl, win conference championship. Once again, I'm going to say we're making it to the postseason. I'm not going to go too high, especially in a season where we have a rookie quarterback about to start. Let's say we're going to make it to the playoffs for the fourth straight season. Here's a look at the full stats. Obviously, it ends up looking like all our quarterbacks played really well. Appling had one good game. Wilcox, surprisingly good. And Matt Ream, I'm very happy with his numbers as well. A high yards per attempt, the highest completion percentage. I am looking at uh, starting Matt Ream week one. I wonder what we're going to get from the running game as Michael Turner gets older. We'll see if we can have anybody break out here. I think we're relying a lot on either Castle or Clayton to surprise us. We'll see. But the receivers, I think, are all very impactful. Daniels had a really good preseason. Roddy White, Harry Douglas, that duo returns. And now Roscoe Lester as the number four, kind of coming out of nowhere. And you combine that with the addition of Tony Gonzalez. I mean, this could be a really good passing team. Like, don't sleep on Ream for Rookie of the Year. Defensively, Michael Boley got all the tackles. 42. Three deflections as well. And a forced fumble. And a fumble recovery. Blocks defeated. Adrian Brockers had 49 with 19 hurries and 3 sacks, 12 tackles. One of our MVPs of the preseason. Brockers was on the team last year as a backup, but I don't think any of us remember him all that well. But this year, you certainly can't ignore him, at least based on the preseason. And for the kicking game, Aldridge only kicked one field goal. So it's very hard to grade the kickers when they kicked so little. None of them missed, though. Five days until week one begins. Here is the injury report. We have Dwight Freeney. It lists him as out. I don't know why he played so much in the preseason, but again, I can't set preseason inactives. Rod Coleman, I don't think, is going to be playing either. Puzlozny is questionable, so is Appling and Turner. 
So week one could be a little surprising here. That's a lot of uh, questions. Final cuts now. I need to cut four players. We'll start at running back, Avion Kaysen. Don't really have uh, a role for him at receiver. We have Banks and Horton. Neither really uh, got to play much here in the preseason, but I'll be cutting both of them. We'll have Short and Lester here. We go five receivers deep, and Waddle gets some reps there as well. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine linemen. That's fine. We have five ends. Freeney's not healthy. We have four tackles. Coleman's not healthy. I think from here we will maybe cut a linebacker. I'm kind of interested in Hollings here. We'll make our final cut O'Neal here, but linebacker is going to be a pretty thin spot on the roster. Ooh, what do we have here? Young quarterback starts. Oh, this is where we have the decision here. Matt Ream, he is the future of our franchise. Or do you play Wade Appling? The veteran gives us the best chance to win now. I'm not sure if that's true. But I am ready to play Matt Ream. The rookie will start week one against the defending champions. Atlantis rookie quarterback was conducting a post-game radio interview on the team's flagship station when he let it slip that he would be the starter in the next week's game. The head coach had wanted to keep it a secret, but no longer. Fans are thrilled with the news. The rookie's going to get the start. A new era begins. Let the quarterback get behind center. That's right, he's going to start week one. That was the plan all along. And I think that Appling is going to be a decent backup. And uh, at least he had a, a decent preseason. Let's see, we have some more numbers available now. I never set that in preseason because there are 20 players who won't actually be on the final roster. What should we do for Reem's number? Seven was, of course, Vic's number in Atlanta. Matt Ryan's was two. What to do here? I kind of like the number three at quarterback a lot. Let's go with three. Our third quarterback of the series, basically. Our third true starter. Kemba Clayton, 44. No way. Vic Beasley got 44. I thought that was kind of strange. 20. Roscoe Lester, 89. 89 works, but I would rather go with 19. Darius Wilkes, the rookie, 62. Not a fan of that. Can't get into the 90s, so we'll just stay in the 70s and go 79. I think that's all I have to edit there. Oh, yeah, I have two kickers on the team. We have to make a couple more moves, I think. So Alex O'Neill was drafted here in the seventh round. His potential is lower than Aldridge. His accuracy is lower. His power is lower. There's a reason I signed him to a non-guaranteed contract. And we're going to release Alex O'Neill. Aldridge will get a second year here. We also have two punters. I think they were both camp invites. Or actually one was an undrafted player I signed yesterday. I think that was Tryon. And he has better uh, power and accuracy, so Wilson is not going to make the final roster after all. Now we can add a linebacker. That is easily the thinnest part of the roster. We can sign uh, Manny Lawson here. That'd be kind of interesting, actually. Yeah, I'm signing Manny Lawson. And that also gives us a chance to check out all the rookies here and their potentials. So, obviously, we've been over Matt Ream. It says 96 for him, and that sounds incredible. We already know about Clayton as well at 88. I did draft guard Jared Putnam, and he has 84 just like Tony Palmer. We could look at starting Putnam here early in the season. I'm not sure if I'll do it immediately. Might wait for him to learn the playbook a little bit, but he does have some rating advantages over Palmer. Adrian Brockers, not a rookie, but his preseason was just so good 
that I want to give him a little uh, attention here. He's a 75 overall with 80 potential. What was he originally? How did we acquire him? He was a late round pick, I'm guessing, because he has a three-year contract. I'm uh, looking forward to what he can do this season. We have Dibbles here at 84 potential. I think we knew that. We have Darius Wilkes at 84 potential as well. So I think that I had a pretty good all-around draft class. I like how it turned out a lot. As a reminder, Ballard has 84 potential. Puzlozny has 87 for corner. I want to see Hendricks and McLean hopefully develop a bit. Hollings only has 68 potential. And at safety, we didn't really add anybody in the draft anyway, but undrafted Sammy Wilder from Holy Cross, he has 82 potential and might not be a bad backup for us. So I think we have a pretty nice roster overall. There aren't any glaring holes that I'm worried about. I think we have a chance to be a really good team again and make it four straight playoff appearances and maybe do some damage in the postseason. So we're going to dive into the newest year with the Falcons next episode. What I want to do is get into game one, see what we can do with Ream, but we're not just going to highlight week one. The better the game is, the more attention it will get, but I want to try to get through a few games next time and get us... An idea of who this team is in 2013 the game is saying so that is going to do it for this episode everybody it's an exciting time in the series and I can't wait for next episode I'll have more of these coming your way it's been fun getting more of this series up please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and leave your feedback down below what do you think about this team going into our newest season thank you again and have a great day